Good morning to all of you. My dear brothers and sisters, prayer, for, prayer is uh, an attitude that is the best help for us to communicate with God. But then we all know that at a certain time we find inadequacy. We feel that inadequacy to have the proper or the correct words to communicate with God or to communicate with other people too. But then communication is the best help which can help us to speak out our heart with God or with anybody. And that's why the disciples, of course, they are feeling that uh, certain type of inadequacy to pray and they are asking Jesus to, che to teach them how to pray. As our own experience too, there are days, there are times, there are moments when we do not know what to say, what to communicate to God. We may be having a lot of troubles, we may be having a lot of problems, we may be having a lot of things to say, but we do not have enough words or the correct words or the proper words to speak to God. And then in those situations, then of course we are looking for the help. But St. Paul, in very beautiful words to the Romans, he says that even when we don't know how to pray, the Spirit helps us. With the deepest sighs, the Spirit teaches us what to say. And of course, the Spirit speaks on behalf of us. And as we see in the first reading of today, that uh, Abraham, he is speaking to God or communicating to God on behalf of his people who are sinful, whom God wants to sweep away from the earth because they are not changing their sinful habits. And then in those situations, he finds himself also in a way, in a very awkward situation. He is begging God, bargaining with God on behalf of them, and even at times saying, Lord, do, if you don't mind, I want to say, okay, if there are little less people, so, I mean, Abraham also tells us about the whole, um, oh, he expresses uh, those inmost feelings of inadequacy in communicating to God. So, in our lives too, many a times we have those situations or we face, we are faced with those situations. As I am standing before you today to speak on behalf of my people, even a certain amount of inadequacy, I feel myself. What are the correct words to speak to you on behalf of my people? What are those words which can communicate well and uh, which can express the innermost uh, feelings or the faith or the situation of my people out there in Pakistan? But as uh, I am here, first of all, I am very thankful to God for this opportunity. I am very thankful to the Archdiocese of Denver and also to the parish priest here, Father Nathan and uh, Father Matt, who have given me this opportunity to come and speak on behalf of my people. So, in a way, I feel like uh, I am doing the role of Abraham. As he is speaking on behalf of his people to God, I am speaking to you on behalf of my people here. As uh, disciples have been asking Jesus, we do not know who was the one who asked the Lord, teach, teach us how to pray. But we can, anybody of us, uh, any one of us can put ourselves into the situation or uh, name ourselves that I was the one who was asking the Lord, teach us how to pray. But the Lord teaches them to pray two basic elements. There are like uh, several intentions in the Lord's prayer. But two main things are there. First of all, the love for God and the respect for God and also supremacy of God that is kept in mind. That his kingdom has to be established upon earth. That his name should be kept holy. That he should be remembered at all times. That he should be all and all. In our lives, in our activities, we should not neglect the presence of God. And that is one thing which is taught in the Lord's Prayer. The second thing is about the people who are around us. 
and it is uh, something communal it is not i ask for myself in the lord's prayer it's always something plural us give us this day our daily bread forgive us our sins so everything is plural and then that teaches us that we cannot be simply asking for ourselves we have to be asking the lord o oh lord our god on behalf of those who are around us so it is a communal prayer prayer of a family prayer of the household it is not prayer of a single person or oh, this is not a request for a single person so as we reflect on this aspect of the lord's prayer and uh, i cannot be taking lot of time because i have to speak to other uh, of other things too but i come back to my own congregation my own people out there in pakistan i am missionary oblate of mary immaculate o m i our existence in uh, this country is especially in saint antonio in texas of course uh, most of the oblates are working there and we are an international congregation working in around uh, 68 countries of the world and our mission is to the poorest of the poor to the most uh, uh, awkward uh, situation where people are and also we help those people who are always at the periphery the people who are marginalized of the society and in pakistan when i speak of my people and uh, when i talk about them of course we are working in around uh, nine parishes we are running one oblate school we are also in one home for the aged and the mentally retarded people so there are uh, around uh, 48 inmates there and we are helping them most of them are muslims and there is one uh, lady she is a lay person lay missionary from uh, ireland and she is also there actually it was her mission in the beginning but she has requested the oblates because we have been visiting that house and now oblates are taking up that mission so already one uh, two of our priests are there to help in that community we are also working uh, in the borderline parishes i mean we are at, uh, our parishes where we are working as oblates they are in uh, adjacent to the borders of afghanistan iran and arabian sea then india and uh, somewhat uh, close to uh, other countries around uh, india so when we are working in those parishes and uh, in those difficult situations our mission is also to the bricklin workers those who are having difficulties in their lives but in the situation uh, when i express about the situation of uh, pakistan or the christians in pakistan we are a minority only 2% of the total population which is uh, above 200 million so we are just 2 million catholics or little more than 2 million catholics in pakistan but all together christians are somewhat like 2.5 uh, uh, or 2.4% of the total population but being christians we know what it is to be speaking about the kingdom of god which cannot be felt which cannot be seen at all dwelling among us we know there is lot of uh, terrorism we know there are abduction we know there are also problems like uh, criticism on behalf of uh, i mean criticism which is done to our religion why we have faith why we get uh, jesus uh, we have, why we call jesus as the son of god so that is the basic problem with the muslims to accept us that we are putting somebody a human together with god or as son of god then there are also challenges in at all levels social injustice discrimination and always minorities suffer a lot in pakistan yet our faith is very strong our people they are always practicing their faith even if they have to die lot of christians have been uh, cru- i mean not crucified but in a way we feel ourselves as a crucified church we know the meanings of cross being christians in pakistan where 96% of muslims always looking forward to attack us in some way or the other 
sometimes verbally sometimes physically sometimes even other types of clashes are there even christians if they grow little more than the muslims around then of course somehow they find some cases and they will accuse us of blasphemy and there are several cases more than 800 cases against uh, different types of people have been signed in pakistan and uh, people have been killed people have been imprisoned recently you might have heard of asia bb2 who was uh, later on last year in the after this government or present prime minister imran khan came then she is the only person who has saved from our uh, laws and she has been able to escape to another country otherwise many have been killed on the roads people are getting uh, lynched on the road by some muslims even bricklin worker in the parish where i was working to one couple christian couple they were lynched they were thrown into the bricklin fire so like that there are all sorts of problems yet our work goes on our presence in pakistan is for 48 years we started our mission from uh, sri lanka some oblates came three of them and they started their mission in 1971 and now already 48 years of our existence in pakistan so we are working in five dioceses of pakistan and we are working in the most difficult areas and we are working uh, for the betterment of the people who are uh, specially unable to have their access to the government or to other things so we speak on behalf of the people for social justice for their rights and the different types of ministries are being carried on in pakistan by the oblates but as we are uh, less in number but thanks be to god now the oblates are around uh, 32 priests eight brothers and one bishop who are working in pakistan so some of our missionaries are getting trained now abroad we have four missionaries left in pakistan from sri lanka there was time when there were more sri lankans and there have been also missionaries from canada one of them and one from poland one from austria and there were two from indonesia but all of them have worked for some times and now they are back but now the local administration has taken up and we are working for the Uh, f- establishment of the kingdom of god but establishing the kingdom of god cannot be done unless people are there of good will to help us and assist us since we do not have any income generating resource so 30% of our income is generated from our oblate resources from around the world and from our journal administration from rome and the rest we are begging here and there asking our friends asking people of goodwill and here and there doing mission appeal so this is my first time that uh, by the diocese i have been uh, approved last year i applied so this year i am here with you to ask uh, uh, you to help us to uh, strengthen our mission and our missionary approach and missionary activity in pakistan so i thank all of you once again yesterday i was here and this uh, today i will be celebrating uh, the next uh, masses and i am here to preach for this mass too so i am hopeful and i am very content that you are rendering a listening ear to us and listening to us uh, with uh, your hearts opened so as we believe in the providence of god and as uh, we are ready to do our part there is always need for us to request you and uh, i mean get your help to let our mission continue and uh, going since it is not only we who do but everyone who has even prayerful presence with us and who have their help rendered to us we all are partakers of establishing that kingdom of god thank you and god bless you Thank you father. Uh, so after the uh, so we'll have a second collection for father's work in Pakistan with the OMIs uh, immediately following the first collection so encourage My dear brothers and sisters today we hear that Jesus is teaching his disciples how to pray. He has been praying himself in different forms 
At times he has been alone, at times at the mountain, other times in the busy schedule of him, he found some time at least to be in the solitude and pray to the Lord his Father so that he get the possible and the needed strength for his mission. And Jesus, of course, in his person, he has taught many a times how to pray. Yet, disciples felt that inadequacy of the possibility of knowing little more how to pray. And that's why one of them, he comes up and asks Jesus to teach them how to pray. I think we all, in our own lives, we have experienced at times that we find as if we are lacking words. We are lacking maybe that consciousness which is needed to be in communication with God. At times we do not know how and what are the words which are more effective for us to communicate with God. And that lack, I think it always helps us to understand today's text by the disciple was asking Jesus how to, uh, to teach them how to pray. And I think in our lives, very often, we all experience that type of uh, inadequacy in different situations. I am standing here today trying to speak on behalf of my people as Abraham in the first reading of today, he is bargaining with God, speaking on behalf of his people to re uh, release them and uh, let God not bring his wrath upon them. It's interesting when I was getting ready in the sacristy, Deacon was asking me, even Father, ten people help you and other don't help you, don't invoke the wrath of God upon our people. Surely I am not here to invoke the wrath of God upon you, but it is a source of blessing for me as well as for all of you. So our togetherness, our coming together under this roof, in this house of God, I think surely it is a source of blessing and source of spiritual strength for each and every one of us. And especially for me as I come here on behalf of my people to speak to you and ask for uh, your help. Believing in the providence of God, invoking his kingdom to come and let be we the participants in establishing that kingdom of God, I think it's not always easy. I come from a church that is in a way we call it a crucified church. Why crucified? Because all around us, in 96% of the majority Muslim uh, scenario or the milieu, it's very difficult for us to practice our faith. It's not easy for us to continue the mission of God and see the kingdom of God in and around us. Where there is a lot of uh, terrorism, where there is abduction, where there is uh, injustice, where their people are not ready to accept us simply because of our faith in Jesus Christ as the Son of God. For Muslims, it's so difficult. They cannot put anybody beside God because God is only and one. He has no son, no daughter, and they cannot think of that, and that's why they find it so difficult to accept us. And in a country where there are more than 200 million people and out of that we are just 2 million Catholics. And of course Christians all together we may be like uh, 3 to 4, uh, 4 million in Pakistan and rest there are also in the 96% uh, Muslims and other 4% there are Hindus, there are uh, Parsi or Zoroastrians and there are also Sikh people. So for us, practicing our faith and invoking the kingdom of God and to see the kingdom of God among us, it's not easy. Yet our faith is strong, our people are strong and they continue their lives as Christians. They are ready to die for Christ. So many have died already. Many